This show is brought to you by these happy patrons. Today's highlights. First, line art is in master. Second, Kurtzgesagt uses Blender NPR. And third, Malt has light groups. Welcome to the BNPR show, a celebration of stylized rendering. Now, the news. The first news item is the Grease Pencil Interpolation Tool. We have seen something related to this in the last show, but Grease Pencil Interpolation is now a tool on the tool sidebar with tweakable parameters on the top bar. The sequence interpolation has more control to interpolate only the line selected. You can tweak the interpolation on each stroke and how many frames to interpolate. Second, the most wanted Grease Pencil line art modifier is in Master. It was a hard journey to find a home for the line art inside Blender. So we want to congratulate Wu Yiming and all the developers involved in this project. With the addition of line art, we have more line rendering options for different use cases inside Blender. The line art modifier can be used on the lighter stuff. Freestyle for the heavy post-process scenes with endless line style possibilities and Malt's line art filter for super fast real-time line art independent of scene complexity. More of the line art modifier in the tutorial section later. Third, Malt has light groups. This feature is useful when you want to isolate the shader using the light. It's also useful to have a shadow that is independent from the light vector controlling the material. You can have a light group number one shading material and the light group number two be the shadow caster. Another use of the light groups is having control of the specular reflections. Download the latest refactor malt build to test it out. Fourth, if you like what you see in the hashtag 256 fest, you might like PicoCAD. PicoCAD is a program to build a textured low poly 3D model coded by Johan Peitz. It uncomplicates 3D modeling to the bare essentials. It's built on the Pico 8 platform, which comes rich with constraints. Look at what people have been doing with PicoCAD and go search PicoCAD on Twitter. They also have a Discord channel. You'll be amazed by the models made on it. There's also an exporter for Blender. The first tutorial is by the developer of the line art modifier, Wu Yiming. Here he shows how to use the features inside the Grease Pencil line art modifier. There are two ways to enable line art in the viewport. The first is by using the Add Object menu, Shift A, and selecting Grease Pencil, then selecting either Scene, Collection, or Object Line Art. The second method is using a Grease Pencil object and adding a line art modifier. Note, all edge detection is done through the camera view. If you see lines in weird places, that's the reason. The first tip is to use line art on a relatively low poly scene and objects. The line art modifier does not cache geometry. This means that line art is recalculated on every view change. And this can be very heavy on a dense mesh. The second tip, intersection lines will only be drawn inside the selected scene, collection, and objects. And intersection between not selected and selected objects will not be drawn. A note. Line art has edge type detections, but fewer compared to freestyle. There is no silhouette line type. And for those who are into the math of line detection, silhouette line type is too heavy for almost real time performance. Malt's line art, on the other hand, doesn't have edge type detection. Everything is an elaborate filter. Third tip, turn off intersection edge detection to speed up the viewport response. Fourth tip, Line art uses freestyle edge marks for edge mark line types. In edit mode, edge menu, control E, select mark freestyle edge to add the edge for line rendering. A fifth tip, rendering line art on particle instances can be turned off to aid viewport performance. The sixth tip, for view occlusion, it works a lot like quantitative invisibility range in freestyle. The new feature here is transparency. Inside material, check the transparency in the line art panel. Click the mask bit you want, then in the line art modifier, enable transparency and click on the mask previously set. So only the object behind those faces will have their lines rendered. 
It's great for visor and glass material. Seventh tip. To render different line styles on the same mesh, you can use different object vertex groups and change the settings on the vertex weight transfer subpanel. You are also required to make the same vertex groups in the grease pencil vertex group. We know this is tedious and it should be automated in future updates. And lastly, baking. You can bake in fixed frame steps. To do that, change the frame step on the output properties tab. Please download Blender 2.93 and have fun with Grease Pencil Line Art Modifier. You may have seen those glitchy effects made with Eevee and Screen Space shaders, but how are they done? The secrets have been revealed by Late As Usual in his article on his website. The key to the effect is Screen Space Refraction, or better known as SSR. You can enable SSR in the material setting. The first step is making a glass material. This is done using a refraction node linked to the output node. To make the distortion effects, use a noise texture to transform the normal vector. For chromatic aberration, the RGB channels are offset. When you combine those two, you get this colorful distortion effect. For a blocky glitch, you need to use a 1D noise. For more controlled glitch, mask out the glitch with a few simple threshold nodes. Using SSR, you can make a pixel art filter. SSR in Eevee is really cool, and we'll get a few SSR effects into Malt soon. The third tutorial is how to create pixel art animation sprites by Soya. The initial setup is a bit uncommon since it uses Cycles as a render engine, and it's a little overkill in our opinion. Nonetheless, set the pixel filter to the lowest value. This is to make sure that aliasing happens. Also, set a transparent background. For the lighting setup, use four point lamps at the top of the character so that the upper parts of the character are brighter. Add a sun lamp to fill in the rest of the lighting. For the freestyle setup, a short note, he sets the line thickness on the master thickness. We discourage you to do this since all the line thicknesses in the line style setting will be a multiplication of the master thickness. You will have more control of the line thickness when it's done in the line style. For the line color, set the color of the line on each material. You'll need to add a different setting later in the line style color to use this setup. In the line style color, add a material modifier to use the color set in the material just now. Compositing the render is an old trick of using scale pixelate scale sandwich node setup. This will get rid of the subpixel data and only sample from the visible pixels alone. If you want to use the pixel size of the render, remove the last scale node. Now you can animate the character and set up the camera to get multiple viewpoints of the same animation. Render everything to PNG files. The next setup is the cleanup. You'll need a good pixel art software like Graphic Scale or Aspirate. Load the PNGs, crop them to size, paint the eyes, enhance the animation, and then you can export the renders of the characters to be used in your game engine. Turning 3D models into pixel art is relatively easy. Please give this one a try. Here are a few bonus tutorials that would be very worth your time. Projected Texture Eyes by a Version of Reality. At the time of the writing of this show, the series has nine videos and is ongoing. The first video is the overview of the setup. The second details the object versus UV coordinates. Third is about UV mapping options. The fourth is about vector group settings. The fifth one is about gradient lines and masking. And the sixth about mass group setup. The seventh video is on iris texture. Eighth is on bend and displace. The ninth video is on bone setup. There might be more videos in this series now, and you can get the whole eye setup on Gumroad for a small fee. The next set of tutorials are by Team Miracles. The first video is making a Ghibli style animation with grease pencil. Second, animating an anime cooking scene with grease pencil. This is part one of the yummy scene. The second part, is coloring an anime cookbook scene with grease pencil. And the fourth video is the making of Hermageddon. 
We will feature Hermageddon later on in the show. Now for the robot voice. Tune shaded face rig, using Booleans by Lightning Boy Studio. If you have not watched this, please do it after the show. Lastly, how to make animations in Blender using a sprite sheet by Jen Abbott. This is an easy to follow tutorial if you want to bring a sprite sheet into Blender and animate it. And robot voice. We hope you had fun with all these tutorials. Well, the amount of awe oozing from the artworks of the month segment is undisputed. Hold on to your hats, here comes the torrent. You may have watched Kirkskazakt in a nutshell video, and in their recent show titled, What if the world turned to gold? As shown on their more recent tweet on Twitter, Blender is used. It seems like Blender is everywhere nowadays. The next animation is High Q, a tribute scene by At Croissant. We love the camera work, so let's watch it a few more times. So good. Here's a snippet of a music video by at Nikomiya Yodaka, made using Blender Grease Pencil and the AI voice synth Neutrino. There's a full version of the music video on YouTube as well. The last animation is from 2020. Ah, quarantine hair, Hairmageddon by Team Miracles. It's a mix of Grease Pencil with Freestyle. And we know it has Freestyle since we saw maybe a few Freestyle artifacts. It's good. You should watch the whole animation. We have more animations than we can fit here in the show notes. Be sure to catch them there. And that's a wrap. Remember to download Malt, PicoCAD, and the alpha version of Blender 2.93 to test line art. And again, all links in the show notes. This show was brought to you by these awesome people. Please thank them kindly. Before we go, one final question. Which sports show do you love the most? Mm -hmm.